the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God who is faithful and just will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in His mercy has given His Son to die for us and for His sake forgives us all our sins as a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by His authority. I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. seventh chapter of Hebrews. The former priests were many in number because they were prevented by death from continuing in office. But he holds his priesthood permanently because he continues forever. Consequently, he is able to save to the uttermost those who draw near to God through him, since he always lives to make intercession for them. For it was indeed fitting that we should have such a high priest, holy, innocent, unstained, separated from sinners, and exalted above the heavens. He has no need, like those high priests, to offer sacrifices daily, first for his own sins, and then those for the people. Since he did this once for all, when he offered up himself, 
For the law appoints men in their weakness as high priests. But the word of the oath, which came later than the law, appoints the Son, who has been made perfect forever. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This 22nd Sunday after Pentecost 2021, the word comes to us this morning from Hebrews chapter 7, verses 23 to 38, permanence. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Every time I walk from the church lobby to here in the church, I'm reminded of my temporary place here as the pastor. There are 12 men on the wall in the passageway leading into the church. And on that wall with each picture is a beginning date for each man and a concluding date with each man. And in between a dash. And I see my own picture at the very end of the list there. Um, And I see that I'm living in the dash. And that eventually that concluding date will be filled in. Though I hope not too soon. Pastors come and go. And I'm reminded of this every time I pass by in that hallway. And that's a good thing. It's a constant reminder to me and to all of you that what we are about here is not the pastor. It's not our building. It's not our programs or anything like that. All of these things are temporary. And we know that. We all come to this place knowing that we are living in the dash between dates. The Psalms talk about this especially. Psalm 39. Behold, the psalmist cries out, You have made my days a few handbreadths." he cries out to God. And my lifetime is nothing before you. There is no hiding the fact that we are living in the dash of life. And for most people, this is an insecure, frightening, temporary and troubled existence living in that dash. I mean, folks, we've just been through a pandemic. And you have seen this for yourselves. I mean, just look around at our culture right now. Fear is everywhere. It's intensified with each clickbait news story that we see on our internet feed. If all you have is the dash... And your job is to fill that dash with with all that you can and as much as you can before it's all over forever, then yes, fear and insecurity and the temporary nature of life and trouble will plague you constantly. And you'll react to it that way. Sometimes irrationally. This is the reality for most folks who believe that that dash is is so temporary and and that everything at the end of that dash is forever over and done with. Consequently, the temporary and short nature of life, the dash, if you will, leads people to scramble for everything they can in this life, to do all they can before that next date is filled in. And they do so in order to mitigate the fear and insecurity that we all feel. So let's be honest here. We come here because we speak truth. Let's be honest here. We live in a dangerous world. It's always been that way. There are risks everywhere. Nothing you do in this world and nothing the government will do will eliminate this risk and danger. Sure, we can can try to, to minimize it, but you cannot make it go away. There is, in this broken world in our lives, nothing permanent that will ultimately bring peace and certainty about things. People will try all they can to distract themselves from this reality. And we're getting pretty good at distracting ourselves. But there is no getting away from this truth that we live in a dangerous world. You know, and I know, where certainty and permanence and peace come from. It's Jesus. It's Jesus. It's Christ who is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow, as the writer of Hebrews puts it. The author of Hebrews shows us this morning that priests and pastors and bishops, all of us, all of them, are temporary men who will all one day have the year put on the other side of the dash. In the Old Testament, 
these priests, these men who offered sacrifices, they did so to appease God, to earn God's favor for not only themselves and their families, but for God's people. That's what they did. As it says in Leviticus and then requoted in Hebrews, without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness. These priests in the Old Testament and all of the sacrifices that we read about in Leviticus and, and Deuteronomy, they were all foreshadowing what is to come with Jesus and his cross. Both the priest and the sacrifice for the sins of the world is Jesus. He's both. And in that one moment upon the cross, in that one moment in time, he cries out from the cross, It is finished. And there upon that cross, when he cries out, it is finished, all of the priests and all of the sacrifices come to an end. The curtain of the temple, as St. Matthew puts it, is torn in half. It's over. And so Jesus ushers in a new era, a new covenant in his blood, which we'll say in a few moments, at his altar. And in this new covenant, this new era, this new testament, the operative word is for you. For you. Whereas in the previous covenant, it was always upward directed to God through the sacrifices. But now, in this new covenant, this new era, it is for you. It is downward directed to us. Raised on the third day and ascended to the right hand of the throne of majesty, as you heard this morning in Hebrews exalted above the heavens. We have a permanent great high priest for all of us. We have a high priest, a mediator and advocate, as Hebrews will later put it, who has been in the filth and in the muck and in the dirt of our lives in this world. He knows us. He has suffered with us. He fights for us. And because Jesus is eternal permanent and alive today, He hears our prayers as He promises to. This is why we pray, as you heard at the beginning of the service in the collect, through Jesus Christ our Lord. He hears our prayers and intercedes for us with the Father. And why wouldn't He? He has redeemed us at a high price. He's made us His own. As such then, because He's alive today and at the right hand of the Father, He is active and available to us in the divine service right here and right now, in this place. People will often ask me, Pastor Goodman, why do you use the term divine service instead of maybe worship or, or mass or, or whatever? Those, are, those terms are fine. We even find them in our Book of Concord. But I use the word or the term divine service because I believe it especially conveys what we are gathered here for. This is God's service. And our Lord Christ promises to come among us not in order to primarily receive our praise and worship. And, and we love to do that, of course. But primarily our Lord Christ comes among us in order to Serve us. Our Lord Christ comes not to be served, but to serve, he says. To serve us with what? To serve us with his sure and certain word. A word spoken not through a priest who offers sacrifices up to God, but a preacher whose job it is to declare to you in no uncertain terms, the entire forgiveness of all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. To serve us. Jesus comes to serve us by putting us to death in the baptismal waters, putting our old lives to death, and then raising us up out of those baptismal waters to be new people in Him. Jesus comes to serve us in the flesh and in the blood for the forgiveness of all of our sins on his altar. This is the divine service. It is Jesus serving us, undeserving that we are. And we certainly, we absolutely sing his praises and say, Alleluia, and thanks be to God for that, 
for all that He has done for us. And then for us Christians, then, Jesus becomes a fixed and certain point for us in this troubled and chaotic and frightening world. We keep fixed upon Him. We find ourselves looking more and more to His sure and certain word. Follow me, He says. Follow me along the way like Bartimaeus does. That's us. And as things become uncertain, we look more and more to hear His certain word in our ears. And so doing, when we hear His word, we're comforted and given peace. Something the world doesn't know about. A peace that surpasses all understanding, Scripture says. Because again and again, He speaks to us in His divine service. His holy absolution. His preached gospel. His baptism. His Lord's Supper given to us as unchanging promises. And these things sustain us no matter how dark and scary things become. It is light in the darkness. It is hope among the ruins. And it is to Jesus, the Word made flesh that endures forever, that we hold fast to in full confidence until that great and glorious day when we join Him and all of the saints, world without end. To the glory of Jesus' name, amen.